All right, coming up here, we've got this segment we've been working on. We're talk we're calling it the ang- we were planning on doing this Angry Thursday, but we thought we'll just do it a segment here. So this is Angry Thursday on Wednesday. The Angry Round Talk. Every one of the gang here and myself has brought in a topic that has made them angry, irritated, annoyed, something that's caused just grinding their gears. We are going to go one at a time. What is going on in your lives that is upsetting you? Let's fucking get angry, boys. Dan's is the Gatsby, probably. Dan, you want to go first? <laughs> You're right. It is the Gatsby. Really? Uh, well, you just prepared this right now. You're supposed to prepare this. Like I know, and the truth is, so you... I had a hard time with this, mm-hmm. and this may come as a surprise to some people because I have a reputation on the show. I'm well aware that I'm Dan the Hater, and yes. I'm by Dan the Hater for a reason. For a reason. <laughs> But the truth is, is like, I even if I hate on something, I, I'm 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 actually a pretty detached person. I don't I don't actually get really mad about anything. Like, it's bluster. You know what I mean? It's just bluster. So when I was re- I I really was thinking about it hard last night. I'm like, what in my life am I like getting mad at all the time? And um, and really kind of came up empty handed. But then we were just shooting that segment. And you slamming into the walls, destroying the drywall, slamming into the tables that we spent all last week setting up. Oh, please. It took five seconds to scoot him back. <laughs> Stop it. And I was, I was, I was getting a little mad. I was getting a little mad. But, um, so, I mean, I know that that's kind of lackluster, but don't worry. Um, our boy AB over here, uh, he's chomping at the bit. He told me he had a list of like 20 items. Okay, well, hold on, Dan. Let's not move along so fast. I mean, what? It, first of all, we got the Gatsby. I spent four thousand dollars on that thing because it's funny. We've got this huge office and open space, and the minute I whip it out and start having a good time, you start pouting in the corner. Like, I mean, <laughs> why can't I just have? Why do you have to go away and be like it, that? Because it's not well. One, because I feel like there was a decent chance of of serious physical harm. Was somebody I, harmed? No, 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 and I and I'm very grateful for Fuck that. Fuck you, Dan. No, no I'm thanks to grateful. you because you just came and sat and, and made let everyone else do it. Really. It is actually somewhat thanks to me because I have a confession. You know how you discovered that it was on the low setting? Whatever. I checked. That was <laughs> I, my fault. Oh, I I I went and flipped it to low right before you hopped oh, on. You did. Honestly. You, okay. That, I didn't, I didn't okay, because I was like, why was it on low? <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but I remember putting it to high. I'm like, that's weird. That's no, I put it on high, too. You went? When <laughs> When did you do that? I was on the guest for the whole time. When I was, no, because uh, I, I lined it up for you before we got started. <laughs> Interesting. And also because I was on it and like, it, it, you know, it, that thing is dangerous, man. It, it is. It's, you could, you <laughs> were just explaining how you can murder somebody with but it. But that's what's funny about it, Dan. It's funny until you until you tip it over while you're... Drifting on it and it falls on your this knee. This is off the rails. I don't need another Segura Segura here. You're gonna Tom uh, Segura. It's off you're, the rails. <laughs> you're put. You're trying to keep me on the rails, Dan. That's the whole thing. Somebody purpose. has to. Somebody has to. What? <laughs> 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 All right, Dan. Laughing? So, so yours is the Gatsby. <sighs> I, I I don't know if I want to put it on the Gatsby. Sounds like it's me. I, I, mean, I <laughs> can I can I dig a little deeper? Is it more that you get angry that you try to keep? the show on rail sometimes and you kind of get shit for it uh you try to keep us all again again a- angry is a strong word i don't know i'm i'm, I'm kind of oh stop it dan <laughs> i've seen you get mad yeah what do i usually get mad about At, you get mad <laughs> well we got in a fight for what yeah what because of me <laughs> <laughs> and that was the implication we got in a pretty bad fight once when with the vape you remember the vape the vape it was a like, long time ago. We had the giant vape when we were doing shooting the video. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, that was just, it was a stressful day. Yeah, it was a stressful day, yeah. but you got, you were getting pretty upset. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would say early on to us working together, our, we, we did get into it a decent amount. Uh, you know, we had to kind of, we kind of had to find the equilibrium. Yeah, we used to butt heads a little bit. Yeah, but, um, what was but I feel like it's about? actually really good now. Well, yeah, we I were agree. shooting the, the Vape Nation 2 video and that giant vape. <laughs> 
And at the time, at the time, it was just me. I mean, I don't think even yeah. Ian was working for no, me. No, it was yet. just you. So it was just me. Yeah. And we were shooting all day. It was a really fucking hot day. That vape is like 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in a full Gucci tracksuit. So I was like. Right. And there were, and there were some technical problems happening with it. And like, it was just, it, it was just rough. It was, it was a rough shoot. But well, so we, we get out to where start on Hollywood. Right. And I put on this thing. It pretty much it's amazing. super fucking heavy. And I didn't expect that. So first of all, I'm like, dude, how are we going to shoot this video? And we had like a big sponsorship lined up. So like, right, there was, there was no on. option. There, we yeah. were shooting this video. So I had this giant fucking vape that probably weighed 70 pounds legitimately. On the oh, front. I think it's more I than think 70. It's more, yeah. I think it's more than 70. I th I, it's probably about 100 pounds. So I'm ca literally 100 pounds here, and the strap, it has a vest, breaks <laughs> like the minute I put it like on. Like immediately. <laughs> and so I was like, Dan, didn't you guys test this? And then you're like, well, why don't you come down and do the fitting? Cause I, and I was like, well, what does it matter if I do the fitting? The, the, the straps don't matter if it's me or you or anyone else trying it on. Right. I mean, I had, try I had tried it on there, uh, but obviously... It, it they kind of dropped on, the ball in those straps. Yeah, it, they it, put in some really weak straps for yeah. a hundred pound gadget. Yes, <laughs> and they broke literally immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up going, running to the store, and getting like I got uh, a bunch of zip ties, zip ties, and we 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 did a makeshift. I, I mean, it all worked out, and that yeah. video came out great. So I, mean, I agree. It was, but yeah, it was just. But I've, I'm was, just saying, I've seen you angry. It, that's true. You were about to have a meltdown that day, to be totally honest. Uh. Yeah, well, again, it was <laughs> there was a lot of factors going into that. Yeah, but, yeah, but I don't blame you. But um, I'm just saying. I, I agree. So you're right. I, I mean, I I certainly do get angry. But that's the thing. When I was just sitting thinking about like what in my life like really gets me mad, like I just don't like I, I'm more of a whiner. I'll whine about things, but I'm not actually mad. It's kind of like hello. You don't have to get well. What? Okay, how about this? How about the uh, insulin prices? <laughs> I know that bothers you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That that is that you know? is very upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, there's just political stuff. But what am I gonna do? Get on a soapbox, start ranting yes. about politics. I mean, I don't, well, I you're don't not know. a diabetic, Dan. All right. So Dan hates me. What? Thank so you, I should care about insulin prices just because I'm not <laughs> diabetic? Huh? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, so in summary, Dan hates me. I annoy <laughs> that's Dan. That's not true. That's not true. All right, that's AB. Not. Try to admit, try, AB. What what's bothering you? And I mean, I, I was just going to say one, but I mean, yeah, I made like a list, no problem. Yeah, let's start with one and see. Okay. Uh, it's got a whole fucking <laughs> sheet, dude. <laughs> Let me begin. Uh, I hate when people post on like Reddit or on like uh, YouTube comments or my own comments. Why does AB follow this person? Why does AB follow Keem? I seen a, a, Fuck you, AB. a comment <laughs> just the other week. Uh, because it's my job. I'm I got to keep up with whoever we're talking about. There's a lot of people I follow that I don't like. So yeah, I've been wondering why you follow Bill Cosby, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and you follow OJ Simpson. You follow Woody Allen. I was like, fair, oh, you, brother, you followed OJ Simpson. Yeah, he had until they blocked too. you. Oh right, he blocked me. Yeah, you forgot. Blocked by OJ. Hey, Twitter dude. world, this is yours truly. Because I kept commenting under all of his posts, like. I don't remember something about him, you know, just something about him being a murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Just like <laughs> those though. Good slice there. OJ. I haven't seen a slice that good since your trial in 90 or whatever, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I convinced Lena once I kind of told Dan this story. I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell on air, but I kind of convinced her that OJ was threatening your life for real. And like, oh, was gonna, yeah, like he found out like, <laughs> wait, I don't think you've told me this. Maybe it was Zach or something. I, don't know. I, I kind of loosely mentioned it to you. So yeah. One time over break, you know, I don't drink, I don't do anything, so I'm kind of just very boring. But I, uh, I don't know, I wanted to live the Cali life, I guess, and I tried like a little edible, oh. and uh, I don't think Lena knew it was. And Lena, wait, you dosed her without her knowledge? Uh, Smoke weed every day. Damn, maybe. No, I mean, like, well, she, I don't know, I kind of don't want to get her in too much trouble. Let me, let me just say, let me say that. Okay. Okay. She didn't know. She didn't, she didn't know. know. She didn't know. Right. Cause she would never do that. Yeah. And she would well, never do that. This is the, this is when I found out that I'm really kind of an asshole because for whatever reason, you dosed mind you, I was like tripping out cause I never do anything. I thought it was funny to pretend that like OJ was like threatening us. That's because, so fucked because, up, bro. You're <laughs> such an ass. <laughs> and I was so like, I was up. like, you can't tell anyone. You know, Ethan just told me that. Why we, just, would, we, we uh, need to be? I don't. Your I wife. don't know. I don't know where it came AB, from. I'm like, listen, we have to be careful. <laughs> Ethan just did a conference call and said like he knows. You know, he's gonna find out where all of us are, where we're living. And I'm like, but you can't t tell anyone. And Lena's like, wait, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. And then 
I even oh. pretended Dan called me, and I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, hold on, that's Dan. Did you loop me into this? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I, I was holding elaborate. my phone. Yeah, I was like, wow. what? I was like, did you say anything? Or she's like, no, I swear I didn't say anything. You, like, you really are a cynic. It was just fuck. you and Lena. And I'm, you underwent I'm, this whole elaborate plan I to fuck with her when she was high? That personality test was right, dude. <laughs> That's on my list, too, Zach, actually. The you know what? Test. Can I add something to my rage list? Yeah. People that fuck with people when they're high. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you guys have no idea. Because I when didn't I, know I was so evil. I don't smoke weed anymore. I don't like the effect of being high. But when I was younger, I had, like, this asshole group of friends that would always fuck with you when you're high. And it's just, it's not cool. It's like, yeah. it's like, it just kills the vibe so hard. So shout out to AB. <laughs> no, I, I hate those people too. And so let me people, get this straight. Yeah. You dosed her and then convinced her that OJ was coming to kill her. What kind of torture ass shit is this? <laughs> you are a fucking asshole. I didn't dose her. I just, uh, I don't want to get her in trouble. Uh, yes, but we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You wink dose her. Wink dose her. Yeah. Yes, dose my wife. Right. And yeah, sweetest person on earth. I don't know. I don't know what that says about me. This was supposed to be about you being mad about stuff, but now everyone's just mad yeah. at you. Yeah. Now, it's, how did this turn to this? What was I complaining about? I don't know. I don't know. But everyone's everyone's rage is AB again. <laughs> oh, bro. So what happened when you guys got sober? Did you apologize? Did you come clean? <laughs> what happened? She thought it was it was real. She thought it was. She goes, "Did I did I write something? Did I message someone about oh OJ coming after you guys?" I yeah. It was really f okay, but then when well, did she you, mad? When, when did you tell her yeah, that it wasn't you real? Break it to her, or does she to this day think that that happened? Is she got finding out watching this episode right now? Hey, Twitter world, you guys this is know the story. Michael Jackson poster that Ian got me for the Christmas episode? Yeah, it was like hanging up, and she's like, "What did what did I say?" And I was like looking at the picture. I'm like, "Don't tell her anything. Don't tell her." And she's like, "Like she was like fully convinced that like she was like tripping that much that she thought I was talking to the, a poster on the wall." Oh uh, yeah, AB, uh, yeah. What did you, did you ever break it to her that? OJ? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I told so her. when did that happen? When you guys sobered up or immediately? Uh, when I was running the segment. When I, no, I'm playing. I told her. I told her like right after. <laughs> you told her when you guys sobered up. You said you told her right yeah, after. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And was she mad at you? To, and, uh, she she called me a buzzkill, but she said it distracted her. She's but I right, definitely that, am a buzzkill. Oh yeah. yeah. Which is that uh, is a I'm fucking. I never buzz. thought, but. Mm. Mm. Foul play, dude. That is a foul play. Yeah, yes. we swore off ever doing anything again. Now we're that was the last time. Oh, so she had a really bad experience. If they're like, we're never doing anything like that. One and again. done, baby. Damn. <laughs> Don't smoke weed with AB. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> I guess so, dude. I'm still thinking back. To, I think back to that moment a lot. You feel bad about it? Yeah, because I feel like I'm really passive and I'm really kind of chill. I don't know. Do you blame it on the weed or chill, what? dude? You have like a whole legal I, path full I of knew. things that enrage you. Oh how yeah, chill can you be? Well, so well, hold on. What? So what do you? What, how do you rationalize why that happened? Do you think it was the weed, or you're just? Do you really torture yourself over this moment? I I just I like to always like over psychoanalyze everything. I'm like, why hmm. my wife is the sweetest person on earth that I try to convince her that OJ Simpson <laughs> is trying to kill me and my coworkers. Hmm. I mean, and I sold it. I sold that shit. You are a good See, actor. I feel like you. I feel like that is potentially funny, but you just took it way too far. Oh yeah, definitely. No, definitely. like that's I'm like if you want to fuck with somebody for like a second and be mm -hmm. like, oh no, I'm just playing. But it sounds like you you let this play out. And, oh yeah, no, I'm fucked in the head. I don't know. I, uh, I, I I'm not trying to be funny right now. I really feel bad. You're a good actor. Well, at least AB. you feel bad. <laughs> we need Dr. Drew back to unpack that. Yo, shit. but for real, I have a. If you're listening to this and you are someone that smokes weed with people, I have a strict no fucking with people while on drugs policy. No fucking with people on drugs policy. Amen. Amen. I support that fully. I smoke marijuana so I don't beat my wife and children. <laughs> what the wow. fuck was that? Maybe's the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that quickly turned into a raging against AB. Yeah, segment, but that was interesting. That yeah. was a good story. I mean, Thank we you. knew we knew this was this was going to take us places. Like, hey, Lovebot, do you have a story for us? Um, well, to be honest, I don't really hate a lot of stuff. Oh come but, on! We don't need the disclaimers. But, Just tell me what what's grinding your gears. I know you're all one saints. thing that has been annoying it. me is uh, McDonald's. No. Oh. Yeah, McDonald's. I'm gonna drop it on McDonald's right now. Okay. Um, well, in United States, you know, McDonald's uh, during COVID has been like really strict. They've had masks and stuff on all their employees, and uh, everything. You know, right? Typical COVID guidelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in Sweden, 
they don't really care about anything like that. They don't really wear ma- don't they don't wear masks. No one wears masks. No gloves. Hmm. No sanitary stuff. Because you know the kitchen is often open. So when you stand there and wait for your food, you just see how they handle the food. Hmm. And no gloves. Nothing at all. Very nasty. Yeah, that, that, that's Please gonna take nice off thing. your mask. Well, so is that ex- and, is that exclusive to McDonald's or is that just a wider thing in Sweden? Well, I mean, COVID result or COVID stuff has been pretty bad in Sweden, uh, almost uh, United States levels, but on a lower, smaller scale, right? Sure. So, in my opinion, the same stuff should mm, apply. But are some restaurants taking more precaution than McDonald's? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You would think that the big corporate McDonald's wouldn't be taking any risks. Yeah. Yeah. But Especially just, when they say that they will in the United States. That just goes to show that these corporations put on the show like they give a fuck about yeah. you. But they're doing the least amount minimum required by the law. Because in Sweden, yep. they're like, oh, no, it, there's no law that says we have to do this. So fuck everybody, COVID for everybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're not Your willing to spend a single cent to make that shit safer. Yeah. I actually have a beef against McDonald's, too, you know. Oh, really? Also having to do with COVID. Once mm-hmm. COVID hit, they stopped serving breakfast at any hour of the day. Oh, yeah, that is. And that has fucked my family life up more than you can imagine. <laughs> Ela, one of the only things I could go th- drive through with with Ela that she would be happy about was the egg McMuffins. And since that's been gone, it's just I haven't had an egg McMuffin in a year because it's like all the time. What? It's like. Crack a fucking egg? I mean, I don't get that whole breakfast thing. Crack a fucking egg, dude. What's the big deal? It's so good. I mean, they had fixed that because that was the thing at McDonald's for years. And then I don't know when it was, but yep. in the recent past, they were finally like, okay, well, we'll serve this all day. Yeah. What does COVID have to do with like not being able to do that anymore? You know, we're back in the Stone Ages. Yeah. Well, excellent story, love. <laughs> Thank you. So did you stop going to McDonald's or you still go there and you just... you? You roll the dice. I, I still eat there. Yeah. To be honest. What do you like there? Mm, chicken tasty. It's called. Chicken? Chicken, Te- chicken tasty. Ta- is that a Swedish thing? What the hell is this chicken tasty? Yeah, that's another thing that I don't really like. They don't, They have the shittiest menu <laughs> ever. Because, you know, you, you on the internet you might see like an ad for something new on McDonald's. Mm. And then you just realize it's only for the United States. Mm. And the menu is chicken always Wednesday, the same in Sweden. It never changes pretty much. So what is a chicken a, tasty or yummy or whatever? Fried chicken. Tasty, Chick- chicken tasty. I don't know. It's like a, a burger. With it's like chi- a, yeah. It's just I'm a looking chicken at burger, right chicken sandwich. And it's some chicken. salad. Huh. And uh, I, I go with no cheese. Oh, there's the A. We got a love order. Mm. Better get that yeah. collab going. The chicken tasty with no cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. All righty. Who wants to go up next? Uh, Zach? Yeah. I know what yours is, Zach. Well, actually, I'm going to throw you a little curveball. Okay. Um, well, I mean, one would be the mayo thing, but, you know, we, we talked about We that. covered that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a bone to pick with iPhones and Apple. Mm. Google, actually. And I know this is going to make Dan happy because he, he's not an a iPhone fan, I am. if you will. Uh, what uh, you said, Apple and Google. Apple, Google, and iPhone. I guess all in this. You have a problem with all iPhone, all smartphones. Here, here, here's the the look. Okay. And I know AB can attest to this because this has happened to him before. When you plug your phone in the car, it even if you turn Wi-Fi off, you plug it in, and you're trying to open your phone. Yes, mind you, you're driving. It this fucking pop up of can't send Google contacts, can't send Google contacts, always comes fucking up. Don't have that problem. You don't have that problem? Never. Wow. I was ready to... Very specific. I was ready to defend (laughs) Apple because I'm like a big Apple fan, but I'm, I know exactly what Zach's talking about. It's such... I, for some reason, it's some, like this past year or so, there's some kind of Google can't uh, sync with servers error message. Yeah, it's the most frustrating fucking thing ever. Yeah, I don't have that problem. My my iPhone, I have this problem where it happens in every car, no matter what phone I have. But it's like, maybe it's because I share cars with Elon, sometimes she drives. But it's like the Bluetooth always gets disconnected for mm. no fucking reason. Mm-hmm. And I always have to go back to the sc- media yep. screen, connect the phone. It's like, can you guys figure this shit out? Right. Right. No, I hear you. I've I've had that issue. It's before. also like step up the tech. Like they can only connect to one Bluetooth item at a time. I've got a like a like a you know 
a cordless uh, speaker that that we've been using for years that can connect to two blue phone, Bluetooth devices at the same time. Right. So it doesn't disconnect you all the time. Right, right. Do you know what I'm saying, Dan? You're looking at me like you don't. Uh, I don't. No, I know what you're saying. Thank I'm just... It just doesn't seem like that big a deal to me. Oh, oh my no. God. It's so annoying. You start driving and then your, the music doesn't work. doesn't bother you. I keep Bluetooth off what? because of that when I go in my car. Hmm. You do what? I keep Bluetooth off on my iPhone whenever I'm in the car. Like, well, I, I don't What do you want to jam to your tunes? Do, what, no, do you have I, Apple I, CarPlay? Yeah, I plug in. Okay, yeah. See, I have that too. So I don't have to deal with that. Do you yeah, have Apple CarPlay? Me either. I do, and it doesn't fucking work. How does it not work? It just doesn't work, bro. <laughs> In the rolls? Yeah, it doesn't work. A half a million dollar car, and you can't fucking listen to music? Not a million, but yeah. I, well, I just half do it on my Bluetooth. Or whatever it was. Yeah, well, okay. It fair. doesn't work. It just doesn't connect. Mm. Anyways, this Google fucking function sucks. Mm. Needs to be taken care of. It's bullshit. Okay. Top comment is going to be somebody like, oh, you just have to flip the switch in this one thing. You know, I'm changing. I'm hating on Dan right now. That's what my second is. Dan <laughs> okay, is go being, on. I love this one. Dan's being a fucking knife in the <laughs> neck right now. No, see, this is this is what I was talking about. Dan's trying to look out and he gets shit for it. He's trying to just give us a heads well, up. Well, he presents it in such a uh, he well, minimizing Zach. He, he, uh, yeah, he's uh, patronizing. Minimizing your trauma. Minimizing your trauma. Yeah, you he's minimizing his grievance. Now, me he's, here, now dude. he's patronizing you. <laughs> but he was I think he was softening the blow the first time. No, he was minimizing. Yeah. Yes. Dan, Dan the hater. Like Thank that. you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Maybe if you guys gave him some love, his heart would open like the Grinch. I give Dan love. Dan gets so much love. <laughs> he does. I'm kidding. He does. <laughs> Ian. And Ian, stand up. Yeah, Ian, please stand up. Ian, please stand up. Thank you. Ian, Ian. please stand up. <laughs> All right, Ian, what's what? bothering you? Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, I told this to Zach, and he said this would be a good one. I don't really know who my rage is directed at here. Or how I really feel. I haven't fully processed it, I guess, in the emotions. But um, I got some food the other day. And, you know, I love all... Shout out to all the food workers. I have no beef. No beef. I don't want any smoke. You say that like Trump. With I, hands. I ordered something. And it took them like 20 minutes to get it together and they brought it out and they brought me the wrong thing. Mm. And it's fine. It's whatever. I just told him, I was like, oh, I actually ordered this. This isn't the right. And the woman gave me like the dirtiest look mm. the entire remaining time that I was there. Like she was just. She continued to stare you down. Yeah. Like, like I was being a difficult customer or something. Like she was glaring at me when I told her she like snatched the bag back. She was mm. very like. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that, yeah. Like, she was convinced that I ordered the wrong thing. This was my uh. Now, whatever. Like, you know, shit happens. I've worked in food. I understand. But uh, I had this, I always have this fear whenever that happens that now my food is going to have, like, spit mm -hmm. or, like, someone's load. Buried someone's in load. Sandwich. Yeah. You know, that shit does happen. I know it's crazy. It's hard to think about, but that does happen. Well, yeah. and it, when I was younger, when I was like in middle school, I had this friend of mine and his older brother once told me a story. He was like, yeah, I used to know this guy at Domino's and he would just like bust fat nuts and no, tomato sauce. No, dude. People like no, semen. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. And I've never forgotten that. And every time something happens, I'm like, there's some fucking nut in my See, burrito. No. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you think they they were lying? Uh, I hope they were lying. Who busts a nut in the marinara? Well, and I brought this up. Dan's worked in food, and he had stories that he's seen. You seen someone bust a nut in the marinara? No, 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 no. Never bust a nut. People like uh, not saying that that uh, not saying that that doesn't happen. But no. but fortunately, I never. Uh, What's your anecdote? Uh, well, I mean, I I worked as a waiter for over five years, um, and in that time. I will say, I mean, this is, it, it's not super common. Like in five years of working there, I probably saw my co-workers fuck with food a grand total of maybe seven or eight times over, over the course of five years. So That's a like, lot, bro. That's way, I would say. Yeah, well, I mean, it does happen. So what were they doing with the food? I mean, I, uh, the one that I told these guys the other day that, that they all flipped out about is uh, I knew this girl who, if the customer, if she really hated a customer, 
she would uh, take loose change and like stir it around in their drinks. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh. She would just like take a. a but that's criminal. And stuff. That's that's honestly criminal. <laughs> I mean, I, well, I think it's all criminal. That's like, bio fucking warfare, with, <laughs> right? I think fucking with food in any way like that would. That's just not cool. You have criminal. to be kind of fucked up to think that's okay to do, even was, if you're she mad. Was, she was pretty fucked up. She was not a not a nice person. So yeah, but sometimes not nice people work in food service, and so of course, I mean, yeah, everyone needs to work. Unfortunately, even the douchebags. <laughs> yep, exactly. But um, <sighs> I, I I never knew anybody that just did it sadistically for the sake of it. Uh, yeah, but when you got people like Ian who are lying about their orders, then right. you get nothing in the like, marinade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stop. Ian. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I've heard about that from people too, like putting pubes in food. Especially since I worked as a waiter for five years, I, I am exceptionally polite to food service workers because I've been on the other end for so many years. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I tip really well. So I'd like to think that my food doesn't get fucked with uh, on on the reg, but I've definitely got spit in my food, hundred percent, hundred percent, dude. Besides, <laughs> are, are you rude? To no, no, waiter? same thing. I've been a waiter for a long time. Okay. Me and Lena, so right. we're always same thing. Nice tip, well, but my cousin, who's the most picky eater, and Lena's uh, Lena has a slight diet, you know, so certain things because you know only eating halal causes her to send stuff back sometimes. And we always say that we're like hundred percent, we're gonna spit in this one. <laughs> Wait, so when you worked in food service, did you see anybody do that? I didn't see it, but at Comerica Park, the Tiger Stadium in Michigan, some guy, there was a video going around of him spitting in the pizza, oh. in the pizza sauce or something like Lovely. that. Yeah. Wait, is this what I have up here right now? That's just, yeah, that's a story. There's uh, So here's a story I got. Comerica Park worker charged, thank God, after spitting Little Caesars, little spitting seizures. on the food, Little Caesars. So this guy got charged. That's awesome. Yeah, he did it on camera, and he filmed himself. Genius. His friend filmed him. He said he didn't know, but clearly, if you're gonna nut in the marinara, don't film it. <laughs> a little extra flavor. Well, here we go. A little extra spice for you. So there's a video of him spitting, apparently on. I'm trying to find it. It's just some dude upset. Well, yeah, that's probably the the victim. Oh, bro, douche. Ugh. What? Come on, Detroit, man. baby. But why would you film it? <laughs> so here, let's see. What did they do to deserve this? Because right now our theory is that you have to piss them off. So let's see. Uh, the person filmed claiming he was wrongfully terminated. Oh, the homie who filmed it got recorded, and he's mad. I was disgusted, mad, flabbergasted, yada, yada, yada. Something tells me in the article they're not going to give the guy justification. <laughs> he it. says, I had to use the bathroom, but I was actually looking for someone higher up in the management to tell me what is happening to pizza. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. Well, the thing is, this was at, like, the baseball stadium, and I think they only serve by the slice. So if he's – wherever he's spitting, I feel like that's going to get to more than one person. Right. If it's – right. It's going to get split up. Uh, Ugh. Ugh. Which is the scariest. I mean, it, I think it's just – Oh, Lovebot is dead. Oh, so this no. says here, the article says that he tried to return the pizza because he said it was the wrong order, and um, the employee thought he was lying. Ah. Just like what happened to Ian. Oh, no, my I'm God. kidding. I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm That's not the article. The tigers suck anyways. I'm <laughs> staying away from marinara for a while. Seriously, you could hide anything in the marinara. <sighs> That's gross. Dude, tigers suck. Zach? Oh. Yeah, the fucking tigers. Suck. I don't watch sports, but I'll tell you, since I moved here, like all the California teams have won the championship. Fuck yeah, Just we're saying, the best, I'm dude. a good luck charm. Go Dodgers. What's that got to do with jizz in the marinara? Yeah, what? No, he was saying the tigers suck. Oh, he's just doing a little baseball yeah, banter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm saying I don't watch sports, but. Okay, am I the only one left? Uh, Yeah. What you got? <laughs> okay, now this one I just want to give a kind of a, a, a disclaimer at the top because it's about Theodore. And obviously I love Theodore and there's so many things I love about him. So this is all kind of just exaggerated for the show. But there's an, a phenomenon. There's so many other good things that we love about him. But <laughs> he's hit what's called the terrible twos. He's a, turning two in June, the beginning of June. And me and Ela were like, oh, he's not going to be – because my mom and people always go, oh, watch out for the terrible twos. It's like a thing that – It's a real thing. They go, well – and I, I was like, the fuck off. Shut up about the terrible twos. Our kid's perfect. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's here. It's here. <laughs> the terrible twos are here. And they're real. It's an actual phenomenon. When they turn about the age of two, they become more self-aware, they become emotional, and they start exploring all these new sensations and kind of self-determination, right? Like they can do things. They kind of, they begin to the understand boundaries. the concept of, of no too, right? Like of like, they testing, I'm he, not doing that or, or yes. like they, they stop being completely compliant like an infant is. That punk has never been completely compliant. Well, okay, fair enough. <laughs> so the thing that's going, well, okay, just for example, this morning, and I had already prepared this last night. So this morning we wake up at 5.30 to a loud crash. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is going on? The dogs are barking. And in comes into our room, Theodore, Aww. who was in a crib, by the way. <laughs> so he comes into our room carrying this big crane toy, Aww. which, by the way, Ela was battling with him because he, wa he wanted the crane in his bed to go to sleep. And Ela was like, you can't have the crane because it's all broken and sharp and spiky. And she's like, you can't have the crane. It's dangerous. I don't want you to sleep with the crane. And he was throwing like a hissy fit. He was crying to the point it sounded like he was going to puke. Sometimes he cries so hard he pukes. That happened once. Brutal. And so she's like, no, I'm not giving in. You can't have the crane when you go to bed. So anyway, she f eventually got him to go to bed. So that's another thing is that like he'll throw a fit if he doesn't get his way. <laughs> and so this morning he walks in with the crane in his hand. And he goes, he goes like, Teddy, Teddy hurt. Teddy got the crane. He says, like, Teddy got the crane because the crane was next to his bed. <laughs> so he he kamikaze out of the crib at 630 <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> which we kind of knew he was getting there because you can convert the crib to like a bed because right. there's a certain point where they get big enough. They can launch over the side. It's pretty tall. I'm telling you, it's, it's pretty tall. And so just last night, we're like, oh, we should convert it like tomorrow. And sure enough, the same day, he comes kamikaze out of the crib, <laughs> crashes on the ground, and then comes into our room at 530. He usually wakes up at like 7, so with crane in hand, and he just gets into our bed with the crane, and he's like, Teddy, Teddy crane, Teddy got the crane. <laughs> and he's just, it was, it was... I couldn't believe it when he just walked into our room like that. I was like, oh, fuck, dude. That's a new phase. I mean, that's like a whole new world right there. Just the thought of him being mobile to that degree. Yeah. Oh, my God. So <laughs> now I'm sure once we convert his bed to like a, a actual bed, he's going to be, it's going to be like coming in our bedroom at every god um, godly hour. Just walking around, it's so weird to think that he's just going to be cruising around. <laughs> he's also been doing this thing where he bullies Shredder, specifically Shredder, where he'll slap and kick him and pull his hair and oh, stuff. No. And Shredder's so patient and good with him. <laughs> but, like, I'm always like, you can't do that. You can't do that. And especially when he gets tired, he starts getting super, like, cranky and, like, uh, we call him trouble boy. When he gets tired, he just stops listening and starts like pouring water and just getting into trouble to test us. And he will pull Shredder and he just laughs and laughs. He thinks it's so funny because Shredder will, Shredder will be like, you know, trying to get away and stuff. And he thinks it's so funny, <laughs> but he's being like a picky eater. All of a sudden he doesn't want to eat anything. The only thing he wants to eat is pasta. That's it. Buttered pasta. He's like Trisha. Dude. Just, I was, yeah, it's just like Trisha. But I was like, dude, you can't live on pasta. So I spent like from the minute I get home, my whole night is now trying to feed Theodore. I'll cook something. He won't eat it. He just wants pasta. And I also got to feed Ela, by the way, who's not that much fucking easier to feed. <laughs> Ela's mom, when she was staying with, with us for a month, she's like, all you do is cook for Ela and Theodore. I was like, yeah, that's my whole life when I get home from work. I have no life. <laughs> And now the new thing, too, is that he never, ever, 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 ever wants to sleep. Never sleeping. There's too much to do during the day with peace and love. Peace and love. I have I too have much, too to, much do. to do. <laughs> you know, back even as long as like a month ago, it was like sleep was like easy, beautiful. Put him down. Say good night. Peace and love. Sleep for a good solid 12 hours. And now it's like no sleep. Waking up early. Which is, it's nice. He's stoked on life. He loves everything. He's in a great mood. He wants to do stuff. But it's like, man, it's tough because he should be in bed by like 
six thirty seven, and this dude's been staying up to like ten lately. Like he just does not go to bed. Oh, and then he gets cranky. Oh, and this is a new thing too. He now, now he doesn't want us to take a bath. He used to love bath time. We got all these crazy, beautiful bath toys. We got like sharks and bubbles and fucking bubble bath and balls. We got this crazy cool new fishing toy where it's got magnets. You throw it, you bob, and you do a magnet and you catch a fish. It's fucking amazing. And he's got like all of a sudden, I guess this is a, a thing that's common in toddlers is they suddenly get a phobia of the bath specifically, hmm. which is odd. He thinks He always thinks there's poop in the bath. He goes, poop, poop in the bath, mm. which I guess is common. I didn't know that, but this is a thing, a phenomenon. Toddlers think there's poop in the bath, and they want to get in the bath. We go, there's no poop. <laughs> there's no poop in the bath. Look at the water. There's no poop. You think I would tell you if there was poop? <clears throat> we empty it. We wash it. We fill it up. There's no poop. And he will not, you know, he went like four days without a shower, because when you try to put him in, he just freaks out. And so... It's been like a constant war because we're like, dude, I understand. But like he starts to stink. His hair starts to stink. And we're like, so uh, he's gotten better. We've been giving him. We usually we bathe him every day. But he was he was so traumatized by this thought that there's poop in the bath. He went four days without bathing. And then he we were just like, dude, we got it. So I had to like hold his legs down. And Ela was had like a. A washcloth, and it was a whole fucking spectacle, man, trying to get this kid to clean. He's gotten better, though, actually. He has improved in the past few days. So, yeah, it's, it's, you learn a lot. I mean, fear of bathing called abulatophia is very common in toddlers. Huh. Shows up around age one to two. It was so weird because he loved bath time. And then one day, yeah. Panic. That's fascinating. And he goes, poop, poop in the bath, poop in the bath. Huh. No poop in the bath. <laughs> There's no poop. It says, during these years of rapid brain growth, toddlers develop what seems like a hyper-awareness of their surroundings. Their brains are literally lightni- lighting up with new information. So, hey, there's no poop in the bath. What no can I say? No poop in the bath. We hope. I pooped in the bath once when I was a kid. <laughs> I was in it with my brother, too. Oh. We were bathing together, and I took a dump. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <That's disgusting. laughs> I'm assuming you were, like, three oh, or four years old. Oh, it was just a old. few months ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's I gotta make it. brown. That being said, obviously, you know, Theodore's amazing. He's doing amazing. He's doing great. I mean, he's learning and he's growing so fast. He's so curious. He loves everything. He's got this enthusiasm for life. He's just so happy every day. He's decided he loves me. I go, you know, I go over there to do <laughs> frenemies and like he, uh, he loves Dan. He, he does love he Dan. He declares his love for me when I show up. He says, I love you, Dan. Yeah. It's so cute. You can hear him upstairs. Yeah. He does love Dan. He likes everyone though. He really likes, don't he take really, this away from me. He is amicable. He really <laughs> loves people. Yeah, no, he's he's a sweet. But he guy. loves Dan. Yeah, he always goes in and from upstairs. Yeah, and Dan. <laughs> yeah, Dan can't Dan. quite enunciate the D, but uh, he, yeah, he calls me ABC. He does. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. How is he with uh, Auntie Trisha? He loves Tr- he loves Trisha. Auntie Trisha. No, he's that- not. He loves Trisha. No, he was. No, at- I was asking how is he towards Trisha. Oh, I thought you were saying he's a like anti. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> And Ant. He loves Trisha and Momo. He calls him Trisha and Momo. Trisha and Momo. Momo is Moses, right? And you know, he started learning to say thank you. So he goes, thank you. When you do, oh, give no. him like a bottle or any, you do anything for him, he goes, thank you. What a guy. And even says you're Cla- welcome too. Sometimes Class I act. thank him. Class act. And he, by the way, he's helpful with chores now. It's kind of epic. Like if I have garbage, I go, go throw this. Can you go throw this out for me? And I'll walk into the kitchen, open the drawer, toss it out. I'm like, oh, there baby. There you go. That's go. the real reason to have kids right there. Mm-hmm. So... It's just a lot of uh, chaos at the house right now. It's hard to imagine because he's such a sweetheart, you know. He is no, he is a sweetheart. Yeah. I'm I'm highlighting the right, right. He's not always like that. It's just there's moments where it's chaotic. I'll mm-hmm. just say that, you know. That's all I got. <laughs>